everyone, it's Angel here at the first championship. I'm here with 4635 Bob Busters. Here in the Curry Division, winners of the Rocket City Regional and the Laguna Regional. This wonderful bot here is about to showcase a lot of stuff today, including their under, brother, under the bumper intake, uh, pivot, indexer, shooter, uh, amp mechanism, and some software stuff that they're doing. All this and more on Behind the Bumpers. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineered their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. Support funds content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and fund members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. Ale, you wanted to talk to us about some of the uh, chassis stuff that you had and some of the sword modules. So why don't you explain that to us? Yeah, so we have a 24 by 30 inch uh, chassis. Uh, we have uh, Mark IV eyes uh, driven by Vortex for steer and Krakens for drive. Um, after that, we have the intake that it's driven by a Vortex. And we use these flat poly uh, bands uh, to take the notes in. Uh, it's pretty consistent and it works pretty fine. Uh, we also use these uh, bearing rollers uh, for the notes to get in. Uh, we also have a uh, shuffle inside the, the intake the, that works to center the piece better. And finally, it goes out thanks to these Omni wheels, it goes to, into the, uh, the indexer. Very cool. Let's move over to Pato, who's going to talk to us about your indexer, your shooter, and your pivot. Yeah, so this here is the indexer. It's really very simple. It's a Neo 550 with some ultra planetary stages that drives this set of wheels and then just some belts, an infinity belt that we saw. We kind of were like scared to do it at first, like saw like scared of like the teeth ripping out, but we saw it was really consistent, never had any problems with that. And that's about it. Two rollers on the on the top and two on the bottom driven by some more belts. And the shooter is is driven by two Kraken motors over here under the shooter. That uh, the the one Kraken drives these two uh, 50 baht four inch wheels, and another Kraken drives the stealth wheels. Uh, we control them independently for us to give it spin for the tip different type of grip and different velocities is to give the note spin and a more, more stable uh, time of flight. Uh, the whole shooter is driven by this vortex here that controls the pivot. You see we have the first stage driven by a belt here. The second stage drives a pulley in the, on the inside that drives a half inch head shaft that drives along all the shooter that comes out an 18 teeth pulley like right under there that is controlled like a CNC or a 3D printer that has two idlers on the sides and it's all on some belts. We saw that we like this type of mechanism a lot. It has absolutely no backlash. We don't have to worry about like, like a chain mechanism has no backlash, super stiff and really reactive for like reactive vision and, uh, and odometry. Uh, and I think that's about it. All right, well, let's move over to the floor. Who's going to talk to us about your amp mechanism and your climber? So in order to score uh, in the amp, we also use our shooter, but with the help of this amp mechanism. During our first regional, we had an over the bumper intake, which was a four bar mechanism, which then was divided into our actual new uh, under the bumper intake and our amp mechanism. What our amp mechanism allows us to do is that it goes up and our shooter shoots the note into the amp and it goes under there and guides the note down into the amp. We added some supports in the back over here because it was bending and it had a lot of structure. So we added these plates in order to have more support and for it to be more sturdy. We also have here, these rollers are powered by this mini new with uh, a 15 to one reduction, gear reduction for the stage. We use this uh, grip tape in order to grab the note easily and that it 
the arm mechanism can work accordingly. And towards the end of the match, we use our climber to get onto the stage where our two telescopic arms powered by two neos, which are the bottom over here, which are connected by a half an inch hex shaft all over a robot, which you can see over here. So this is the shaft that connects both our climbers. Our hooks have been modified over the season. Our last final design has been more open than our previous one so that our driver, Pato, can just get easily onto the chain and have le a less to climb more faster and easily. Cool, very cool. Is it possible we can get this robot in action and see it all? Okay, so we have two mods, like Ale said before. We have a shuffle and a non-shuffle. The non-shuffle we use for when we're cleaning up near the wing, and it's the, the, like the critical thing is just quick shots to the speaker, and the shuffle is to like long shots to like ha always be precise shots, long shots. So you guys can see. This is a shuffle, the Omni wheels allow it to spin. Now the app mechanism is gonna go up and the shooter shoots into the rollers. Let's go shuffle again. That was a non-shuffle. We'll also show you what we have is a backup plan in case something happens to the intake. We can intake directly from the source. So, you know, we're prepared for all cases, all circumstances, worst case scenarios. We like to have that. And I think we can show the climber also. And the hooks on the shooter here are like a break for the normal hooks on the telescopic arms. So we always last those five seconds. Or if like only one hook grabs on, there's like two other backup hooks. Very cool. Looks like you're doing a lot of stuff here with software. So let's take, head over to Gus, who's going to talk to us a little bit about that. Well, uh, this year we knew that we had, like, we needed uh, 3D post estimation to do uh, faster things, so we can try auto line, so we can shoot from practically anywhere in the field. And so we decided we started with a limelight at our, our first event, a limelight three. Uh, but from then, then on, we decided to change from this. Uh, from that to these cameras, OV9281s uh, on TPU mounts. We used to have them be uh, PLA, but we had ones that a robot got on us and they broke. So now we have TPU and we've had them work great. So since we have the post estimation, uh, it allows us a lot of flexibility. And that is also reflected on how we control the entire robot. It is all command based. Uh, with a simple state machine, uh, plus the, the simple state machine. And so practically everything in control is just uh, like, you press a button and the robot intakes the piece automatically. You press to shoot and it intakes the piece automatically, uh, shoots the piece automatically. And for our shoot and move, you, we use that 3D post estimate uh, to predict forward 250 milliseconds into the future, where we create 10 solutions and we pick the one with the lowest cost, a pre-calculated cost from the current robot state to that state. And once we pick that solution and we arrive to it, the robot decides to automatically shoot the note. Uh, we also have LEDs for status and, and all that stuff so we can actually see uh, what's going on with the robot. And uh, right here, uh, my partner can show you a little bit of the logs. Uh, so some of the post estimate or some, uh, some of the intake, uh, well, not the intake. This is the amp mechanism. So it's going to the different positions. Everything is controlled. Uh, we control acceleration and velocity. And in auto, we started utilizing choreo trajectories uh, implemented with our own uh, custom, our custom path, follow, path follower. And so we generate the trajectories, upload them into the robot, and from there uh, we can we can do, do the autos uh, very very e easily. So, for example, right here, this is one of the autos, and so everything is just uh, run custom without using like path plan or anything. Um, 
So thanks to all these great mechanisms, we're able to have a lot of control of the robot and make it as, as consistent as we can. Well, 4635 Bot Busters, thank you for taking the time to explain your robot to us. You have an amazing robot this year and we can't wait to see what you do at the first championship. Good luck. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to Kettering.edu first to learn more and apply.